Hey guys, we're going to be rounding some decimals today and you should be so excited about it. Okay. So, um, rounding decimals isn't too bad. Sometimes maybe the most confusing part is when they use these words, um, like the nearest hundredth, the nearest tenth. And sometimes it can be hard to remember which one it is. So guess what? I made you a chart. That was nice of me, right? So here's a, here's our big number, 2,586.547. Okay. So you're probably very familiar with these, the thousands, the hundreds, the tens, the ones. Now, one place after the decimal is called the tenths, two places after is called the hundredths, seven places, not seven places after, <laughs> three places after is the thousandths. And it keeps going just like it can keep going this way. It keeps going that way as well too, right? So the way I remember is I think 10 has one zero, so one place after the decimal. 100 has two zeros, so two places after, okay? That's how I remember it. If that's helpful, great. If not, forget I ever said that, okay? So here we are rounding to the nearest hundredth. Hundred has two zeros, so that's going to be two spots after my decimal, okay? So we want to have two numbers after our decimal. We want it to be 12.5 something, okay? So we know this is the spot we want. This is either going to stay a seven or go up to an eight when we round, okay? How do we tell? We look at the number behind. The number behind it is an eight, okay? Zero to four, we keep this number the same, okay? Five to nine, we round this number up, okay? So it is going to be 12.58 to the nearest hundredth, okay? Now, the next one wants to the nearest tenth. 10 has one zero, so that means they want one number after the decimal, okay? So it's going to be 56 point something, okay? We look at the number behind. It is less than five, so that means we are going to keep this as 56.2, okay? That's all there is to it. Hopefully that's helpful. Bye!